Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create an Ableton template. That way you can get ideas down more effectively and ultimately want to come and work in the software. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This is what my Ableton template looks like. I'm gonna briefly go through it and then we'll go ahead and create our own from scratch so you can see how it's done. So at the very top, this is where my mix chain is gonna be. This is turned off until the very end when I actually have to start mixing um, or at least start running things through the group. I mix as I go, so it makes it a lot easier for me. This might not work if you don't mix as you go. I'm gonna go ahead and move down here. Here I have a side chain. This is just a trigger track. And then I have a snare and kick group. This has a full parallel processor on it. And then the kick and the snare both have processing as well. So a digital clip for both, I believe. And then the snare is gonna have the low end taken out. By default, my tracks all have the digital clip uh, saturator preset on with soft clip on. That way nothing is clipping right when I import it. Moving down, we have the tops and fills. Again, another full parallel processing. And then this is where we start getting into some sidechain compression. So my sidechain is gonna be tied to that sidechain track up here. And then, then everything in this tops and fills are gonna go here. And then I have toms again with that digital clip fills same thing usually i'm going to eq out some of the low end from the fills because they don't need to be competing with anything but um, how it comes i kind of decide as i go to see if it's going to need that low end to get trimmed off or not for tops i have most of the low end and mid coming off tops i just use it for like filling the uh, atmosphere and then for the crash digital clip ride digital clip and then hat digital clip and again this is grouped within the tops and fills so everything is being side chained i don't have to worry about adding another side chain for our bases i have this also in a group and then i have the low end being eq'd out just at 15 hertz usually if i'm working with a lot of samples i like to hear what the sub is going to sound like within the mix so i don't take away the sub until after the fact when i'm going to start working on adding my own sub so i have just an eq eqing out just a a little bit of the low end anything that's not really going to be heard anyways and then add some multi-band compression side chain and then just one audio track just to drag samples in there and then also i have it set up to where if i import a midi by default it's going to have a serum preset with it with that digital clip already that way i can just start uh, kind of going in like that and not have to create a midi track add the digital clip add the serum whatever it's just right there for me so that's just ready to go Deleting that and moving forward. I have a synth track set up almost exactly the same way. The EQ is just at the end for some reason. Uh, Multi-band compression, sidechain compression, and then for my audio track, same thing, just a digital clip. Again, this is just for ease of use. That way I can just drag and drop things without having to group them, without having to create audio tracks. It's just already there for me. There's no extra steps for me to get an idea down. The effects, exact same thing. This is sidechain. And then usually I'm gonna drag this EQ all the way up to like 200 Hertz, maybe 300 Hertz to get rid of all that low because again, the effects do not need to be competing with any of the low end elements but um, that's just there for kind of taking out anything i don't need and then i adjust it as i go same thing with the audio track digital clip sub bass i have the exact same lineup here low end is being taken out a little bit just because nothing under 15 hertz is really going to be heard unless it's a really expensive setup uh, it just kind of uh, makes your mix quieter ultimately so i take that away and then again the audio track is just going to have that digital clip so if you wanted to do something similar i'm going to go ahead and erase everything besides the side chain and we'll just start working from there so we're just going to start off with our side chain track and again this is just going to be our trigger so what we can do here is let's say we can create a couple of tracks and then usually just to keep things organized i'm going to group them same color so we can just do like red it's a little bright but it'll do and then we can name this one like let's say drums and now what we can do is name our kick our snare and then maybe we just need those two but you can also add your hats and your toms and everything in here but i find it's easier to do the kick and the snare separately because those are really kind of sitting on top of the mix unless you have vocals going so we can do kick and snare Let's create another two audio tracks and we'll grab them out of here. Let's do these, let's say blue, let's group them. And these can be just the tops. So you can have, let's say toms, you can have your fills and then make a couple more. You could do hats, let's say rides, crashes. And then within here, what you can do is you can also group these together. So now those are all together and then let's keep moving forward. So we can do, let's say, group these together and do these as our bases. And then one thing you can actually do too, is if you right clip your group, you can assign the track color to the group tracks and then that'll change it. So if we wanted this one to be purple, you could have, let's say opener, you can have constant and then you could have like base fill right just to give yourself kind of an idea of what goes where minimize that one we can create a couple more let's say these are going to be our synths so like any type of lead so we can do let's say lead synth line and let's say art and again right clip that group assign track color and there we go and then let's do for effects again let's assign that track color let's do 
atmosphere transition and then let's say like white noise minimize that one we can do one for bass this is the first one we use a midi track for so we can call this sub we can call this um one shot all right and then last but not least we can do a vocal rack so let's do vocals assign the track color and there you go now that's a super basic um ableton template but you have access to everything here so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that sidechain. And now what I'll start to do is through each group, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding effects. And I'll just keep this super simple. So the main thing I'm thinking about is EQ. I'm gonna drag EQ onto my top. So let's route that to the sidechain. I usually have my threshold around negative 20. This one's at negative 18 and then ratio I'll dial it in. So I'll probably do it like closer to three to one. That way it's really hard, really punchy when it ducks. And then we'll copy that to all the other ones below. So bases, synths, effects, our sub bass, and then I'll keep it off the vocals. Three days later. Next thing we can do is we can do EQ. So my EQ automatically loads in as taken off at 200 Hertz. Um, we can leave that for the tops. Um, maybe even drag it back to say 150 and then we'll do a sharper curve. And then what we can do is for our group within our group. So we can name this symbols. Let's do EQ eight here again. And then we can drag this to like 450 maybe even 500. That way we're getting off all the mids and lows because the symbols are just kind of uh, providing some like washiness. For our bases, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna EQ out everything below like 15 Hertz and then we'll do a sharp curve. This is just that way we're not adding anything that's a kind of extra, we're keeping the mix pretty clean. And then we can go ahead and copy that one to our synths. Our effects is gonna get the 200 Hertz treatment and then our sub bass, we can do the 15 Hertz and then vocals, we can do our EQ8 as well with that 200 hertz. Now, last but not least, just to keep it really simple, we can focus on our drums just for a second and then we'll do one more thing. So for our drums, what I like to do is I like to go to my glue compressor and then I like to do the full parallel processing for the drums. You can dial this in as you want. I wanna say how it loads in is something that I've defaulted, which if you right click, you can save as default preset right here at the bottom. Um, but I think this is kind of how I have it dialed in. It might not be, but I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna drag that full parallel processing onto my kick and snare just to make sure they're punchy and then for my snare i'm going to add that eq8 and then again mine auto load with that digital clip so i'm going to leave it like that now lastly instead of using multi-band compression or maybe something that um, is a little bit more technical what you can do just to kind of get going and make sure things are loud and not clipping is you can go to your all basically all of your bottom groups below tops and you can start adding a saturator again mine is going to load with that digital clip with the soft clip on and then i'll just copy and paste that to my synths to my effects to my basses and then my vocals. And now, even if I load something that's super loud and I don't catch it right away, especially if you don't mix as you go, you're gonna be able to work with a mix that's not gonna be so overbearing because you have that soft clip on, it's kind of uh, limiting how loud it's gonna be in comparison to the other things, and you can kind of fix it later if that's easier for you. That's basically it for setting up a project file. For your master, you can add things like a limiter, you can add things like a Munson EQ to make things a little bit less harsh on your ears, and then kind of a digital clip. This is gonna be completely up to you. I would say um, you can work from this if you're not used to mastering, but I usually have this set how it is, and then I'll load on Ozone and start messing with Ozone. But if you have it like this, this is a good starting point, I believe, and uh, having the Munson on there just kind of from the beginning is, is going to take out any harsh frequencies that you might deal with while you're working. That way you can have less ear fatigue as you're working and not feel like you need to get up and take a break as often. Now, one of the things I want to show you is if you don't know already, if you go into your preferences on Ableton, you actually have the look and feel section here. So wow. I think people have commented on the videos before on what theme I'm using. Um, so the one that I'm using is this Live 9, but you also have these different ones. You have a light theme if you want to work with that. That one's a little bit too much for me. You have a mid light. I think that one looks good. You have a mid dark. I like that one a lot too. You have a dark and then you have this live nine. And of course you can change the um, zoom display and then you can change like the brightness and whatnot. I'll set mine back to where it was. And then you have the brightness to mess with. It's also gonna change some of the uh, text to be white or black. And then you have the color intensity. And of course that's just going to uh, kind of adjust or help your eye strain as well. And now it might seem kind of dumb to mess with the Ableton kind of how it looks, but if it's gonna help you sit down and make music, it's not dumb if it helps you work. One other thing I wanna mention before I go, if you do create a new audio track and you wanna have it come in as a certain way, have different effects on it or whatever, what you can do is, let's say drag an EQ to it. Let's say drag a spectrum, a saturator and a tuner. 
Now what you can do is if you right click it, you can save as default audio track. And now every time you create it, it'll come up like that. So again, mine just has that saturator in it to come default. Um, this works the same way with MIDI. You can open up the MIDI track. And then if I wanted Serum and Saturator load on it, I could save that as my default MIDI track. And then every time I open it, it's gonna come up with that. So those are some tips on how to create your template, how to change how it looks, and how to create tracks and MIDI tracks that are automatically gonna come preloaded with things that you pick. With all this being said, I hope this video helped you and I hope you take these things into account if you're not already, but thank you for watching and we will see you again in the next one.